Welcome to Inside Ag from Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. I'm Shelby Varner. American Farm Bureau recently had their convention in Puerto Rico. And at that convention, there is an Ag Innovation Challenge. And this year's winners are from Kansas. Today, we're joined with two of the NORDEF founders, Austin Hausman and Adam Bronji. They are in to discuss their company and their experience with the challenge. Gentlemen, thank you both so much for taking the time to join us today. Thank you. Austin, to get started with you, could you talk a little bit about what is NORDEF and what inspired the beginning of NORDEF? Yeah, absolutely. I think it was about four years ago, Will was actually frustrated by trying to purchase DEF in the marketplace. Um, he was seeing lots of products go bad. They were dumping lots of inventory and he and Adam started a conversation that says, isn't this relatively easy to produce and why is no one doing it this way? Uh, so Will and Adam decided to make diesel exhaust fluid in Adam's garage and uh, passed a few initial tests and they thought, yeah, there's, there's actually something here. Um, at which point they called me and said, how do we actually bring this to life so that we can do it in a way that makes sense, you know, commercially and engineer this into a, a solution. So I think if you kind of tie back what ultimately founded it, all of us have a, a fundamental principle belief that things should be easier than they are, like boil things down to their absolute fundamental principles. Are we overcomplicating it? Yes or no. And I think diesel exhaust fluid is a perfect example of that, where we're taking something that is inherently very efficient we're stacking in a bunch of water, shipping that all around the country and creating a shelf life concern by mixing it in a very traditional manufacturing sense. And when you take the water out of the system, uh, urea has a, almost an infinite shelf life in the right storage conditions. And you could ship urea to the point of use, mix the water using the local water supply filtered, of course. And now you have diesel exhaust fluid without the shelf life concerns. And ultimately, you know, we think we can cut out about 50% of the retail cost by not shipping water around the country. That is really interesting. And Adam, going to you, you guys are a team of three. How did you work with your strengths and weaknesses to make this venture possible? I think that's a really good question. And Austin really kind of touched on it early on. Will and I kind of had the idea or the concept pop in our head and, and why can't we make this product at the point of use um, with you know, without shipping, you know, 67% water. So Will and I have varying backgrounds. My background's in fluids and sales. Will's background is in kind of the heavy duty industry. And neither one of us are engineers. And that's where um, Austin came in. He's got a, a very talented mind when it comes to putting, you know, what's rolling around in my head down onto a piece of paper and into a concept that's, that's truly functional. I struggled a bit initially just in my garage you know, I, I initially wanted to use, you know, remote control car servos and things like that to, to automate this machine. You know, Will and I don't have the creative mind that Austin has. And so when we brought him on board, you know, things really took off. So Austin's background in engineering, my background in kind of the fluid side of things and Will's background in the actual trucking industry or the, the consumers of diesel exhaust fluid. I think, I don't think we could have come up with a better team to kind of bring this thing together. Three different minds, three different backgrounds, but all, all mesh really well on a common goal. I'm glad the three of you were able to come together to hopefully solve a problem that you saw presented. Going into the Ag Innovation Challenge, what made you decide to apply for it? Yeah, it's interesting. We have funded this venture to, with non-dilutive equity the best that we can. So every dollar that we've put in has allowed us to stay in the cap tables of the re-owners. We think that's really important. Um, this is an, an industry where there's a litany of challenges of large companies coming in and mothballing technology. And we want to make sure that, that we maintain control of this for as long as reasonably possible. Um, and we, we ultimately see the, the end impact of it. So when you know we are constantly looking for ways to bring additional parties to the table from a non-dilutive sense, groups that can bring something other than just money. And I think the Ag Innovation Challenge was a great example of that. And even as we started to look at the criteria for the initial pitch, um, it helped guide some of our thinking in the way that we're bringing the product to market. To be fully transparent, ag was not the first stepping off point for us. We didn't you know, see that as an obvious end user of the, the product. We were kind of attracted to the natural shiny object of the last mile logistics industry over the road trucking. But as we started to go through 
the criterion for the Ag Innovation Challenge, it started to change our thinking a little bit. Like what communities are actually disproportionately impacted by this? Ag communities are almost always the last on service routes. Their seasonality has some massive impacts to this. And so as we started looking at it, the application process actually helped frame the way that we would go to market with the product. So we put together a quick video. We'll have the, the good idea of actually hiring a professional videographer to help put us together so we weren't you know, trying to do this on our cell phones from our cars. And from there, we had no idea. Uh, we knew there would be a lot of people that were applying. Um, we kind of had our fingers crossed, but you know, it was a little bit of a flyer at that point. So I think we were super excited when we made the top 10. Obviously, you know, Farm Bureau Convention isn't always in Puerto Rico, um, and it's a great place to, to go spend a few days and, and pitch the concept and the product. But we originally dug it up um, and didn't really expect to be in the mix. Didn't, you know, it, it ultimately helped frame uh, the way that we would take the product to market. And um, I will say ag has become really, really forefront in the way that we're bringing this product to market because it, it actually checks more boxes than some of our original applications. You talked about the process of pitching it. Could you share what that experience was of pitching in the final round? Yeah, so it was interesting because we got to Puerto Rico as a team of, I think there were nine of us that, that made the, you know, the finals down there. And the first pitch was a, a panel of judges in a very small room, um, mostly other pitch contestants. Um, so a little less pressured, um, but still very much a, a quick dialogue. I think it was a seven minute pitch with a three minute Q&A. And it's, it, it's incredibly challenging to get a, a product idea out there that it can be relatively complex in a very succinct seven minute window and you never know who the judges are going to be. Um, interestingly enough, in that first round, we actually resonated with the judges very well. One of them was a farmer who had run out of death and his dad was furious and it actually stopped their operation for the better part of 48 to 72 hours. So it was, it was interesting because whether we were pitching to judges or we were pitching to people walking around the convention or, you know, groups that we were engaging with just that were on the island, everyone had a story of how deaf has created an impact on their operations, whether it slowed things down, made them more costly, created downtime. Um, people would stop us in the, the lobby of the hotel and say, we have, a, we have equipment down for deaf issues now. We need this in the market. So I think, you know, pitch can be broad. Um, you know, in the traditional sense, it was, you know, pitching to a panel of four judges in a small room at first. And then I think the, the finals was a much, much different exercise. It was a 360 degree stage in the middle of the convention hall. Um, dare I say thousands of people watching, uh, but a very, very engaged audience, mics, cameras, lights, the whole thing. And I, I don't think that was actually the challenging part. The challenging part of the final pitch was it was now three minutes. So you had to take this idea and this concept that you've spent years creating and pitching and explaining and try to very, very quickly get it to resonate with the audience, get the impact to resonate and kind of walk through the solution. One of the judges was an expert in intellectual property. So you're trying to pick up these little things where you don't alienate the audience by talking about patents and IP, but you also kind of resonate with the judges because that's ultimately who's helping guide this decision. So it, it was an interesting um, five days. It was a, it was simultaneously a long and a short five days um, with a lot of waiting in between and a lot of anxiousness and buildup for what ultimately became a three minute pitch and a very short Q and A. Adam and Austin, obviously you're on the team together with William. Could you describe what your individual feelings were when you learned you were selected as the winners? Yeah, I'll walk you through kind of the journey. Um, you know, when we got there, it was kind of great. We're happy to be here. Um, you know, didn't really have any expectations. We'll see how this goes. Um, there were eight other really, really good companies standing up there with us. And there was very little overlap. If you look at the industries that they touch, um, the products they're bringing, their approach to the market, everybody was very different and varied. So it wasn't that we were competing against somebody that, you know, was doing something similar to what we were doing. We were competing with you know, embryo health and food markets and mushrooms grown in shipping containers in a very economical way. And it's not like it's this direct competition and there's actually a really great amount of camaraderie that came out of it. But I think we, we went there with no expectations. We went through the first pitch, saw the others and we thought, you know, we've got a good shot at making the finals here. Let's see what happens. Um, and once we made the finals, it flipped from this dynamic of, man, we're just happy to be here to, I think we can go win this thing. 
And so that mind shift shifted really quickly. We get through the final pitches, you get all that. And then it's another 24 hours to find out if you win. And then we went right back to like, that was amazing. You know, we left it all on the table. Let's see what happens. But you know, the whole experience has been great. We actually winning the was you can't really put it into words, but we picked up so much along the way, all of the stories, relationships, partners, contacts, that was equally as valuable, if not more. And Adam, what was your experience like in Puerto Rico? So it was a little different with the the Farm Bureau. They provide the, uh, you know, the tickets, the airline tickets and and things for two members of each group. Um, Will and Austin being based in Kansas City, we thought that it'd be best that they cover kind of a single itinerary and I just kind of add myself to the mix. So when it came to the presentations, I was actually in the audience for both the initial pitch and then the final pitch. So my experience was a little different, a little less stressful, I guess you could say, because I wasn't on stage, but at the same time, it was also cool to, to actually interact in the crowd as Austin was pitching. So the, the final, when they announced the winner, it was in, I don't even know how big that hall was, but there was, there was a lot of people watching the top four and, and who's going to win. And it was, it was just really neat to see the um, kind of the reaction of the crowd when we won, because they were you know, clapping and I was right there with them. And from winning the challenge, you guys were awarded $50,000. How do you plan to use that to expand your company? Absolutely. We've already actually used it to shore up some of our IP gaps. So I won't talk about what those are until those are filed, but um, it's actually helped us um, solidify some of the the IP kind of hangovers that we've had as we've created this. So we had the the primary patent done a couple of years ago, um, and there were just some kind of secondary and tertiary things in there that we've already helped shore up. We made the comment when we were down there and, and we started off the podcast by saying, you know, ag wasn't our initial approach. Every dollar that we've gotten out of the Ag Innovation Challenge will ultimately go back into benefit ag community. So what we are planning to do is partner with a few co-ops uh, locally to help getting the product out into the market and start running real trials. So, you know, if you look at the product journey, we've been very precious about owning the, the certification of this and making sure the product is good before we go create more pain in the market. The last thing we want to do is go put out a product that ultimately fails and causes more frustrations or some of the same frustrations. So uh, at the end of last year, we achieved ISO certification, which means you've got a product that meets all of the standards. Um, it is compliant as a, a diesel exhaust fluid, but we want to make sure that we can continue to do that predictably and reliably before we hand this over to people to start putting it in their vehicles. So we will start ag um, trials of product that we're creating. So we'll be mixing it ourselves probably in the next 60 days. But we would hope in, in late Q2, early Q3, we'll hand a machine off or two to a, a local co-op and, and get as much product out in as many applications as possible. Ag is really far reaching. This is everything from you know implement equipment, tractors, combines, school buses, over the road trucks, um, personal vehicles. There's a lot of applications here where we can go get our product out there and start trialing it. But also it creates a real impact day one. If people aren't having downtime and are getting access to affordable death, the, the impact cycle of, of the innovation is very, very short. You know, We could actually be implementing um, real impact in the next six months. What do you want it to look like in a year? If things go right, what are you hoping Nordef looks like in a year? Yeah, this is an interesting one. So, you know, with most of the way that we've approached our lives, we've had plans and we've looked ahead and we've had this really pretty roadmap or these high expectations. Nordef is not that. The way that we've approached Nordef was let's just keep pushing this forward at each iterative step until we hit a roadblock and then we we'll solve that roadblock. Now, that's not a perfect way to run a business, but it's actually worked very well to grow the business organically. We haven't felt pressured you know, to cut corners or do things, and it's actually made for a great product and a great company. But I think you know, to answer the question, if you look forward a year from now, we would love to just be accumulating mileage. Um, we don't think this is a, you know, a quick turn retail product. We don't think this is, you know, we're not chasing revenue in the next 12 months. We really want this to be foundationally solid. The challenge you have with automotive products is, there's a rule in the market that's somewhere between a billion and 2 billion miles of product validation. That's really, really hard to do when you're burning through a consumable. So there's ways that we can hack that growth curve and that time curve, but ultimately we want to start using the product in real world applications in as many ways as possible, as soon as possible, because it does take a long time to build up that product validation. And we want to create raving lunatics out of our customers because ultimately that's what's going to drive the success of the company long-term. So, you know, I think, 
the, the plight of the entrepreneur is you always overestimate what you can get done in a year, but you underestimate what you can get done in 10. And I think we're, we're definitely on that journey. We kind of went on with eyes bigger than our stomachs early and um, slowed down, caught our breath, and we're, we're making sure that we're doing things the right way. And, and that's going to take some time, but we're really excited about the product journey. And you know, the more mileage we can accumulate over the next 18 to 24 months, the better off we're going to be. I'm sure people are very happy that you're taking the time to do it correctly. Adam, as one of those two people who really started with Nordef and got the idea running forward, for someone who has a, a potential business idea, what piece of advice would you give them? I think, um, and I've read this in many, many books, the, the biggest thing for us was, you know, we could sit around a table, have an idea, you know, come up with things in our head, different solutions, but until we actually acted and did something about the idea, you know, our first step was mixing a small batch in a measuring cup in our garage and using a refractometer to prove its, its solution, its percentages. We really had nothing. We just had something rolling around in our head. So I think my advice for anybody that has an idea is to really take action, whether it's the smallest step you can think of, uh, but something tangible that you can say, okay, we've, we've made a step or a progress forward. And for us, it was really that first mixture in our garage that we put on the refractometer and holy cow, it's the exact percentage that I thought it was going to be. It was like, first shot, I can do this. Holy cow. And then, like I said, we hit some struggles as far as my creative engineering and, you know, built a team that, that helped us, you know, keep going on each one of those, those hurdles, like Austin mentioned. So we, we take it as it comes and, and, and just keep going. And like I said, the first, the first step is the hardest and, and the most advantageous, I think. Thank you, gentlemen, both so much for taking the time to join us today and share a bit about NORDEF and what the experience was like going through American Farm Bureau's Ag Innovation Challenge. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Shelby. That was Adam Bronji and Austin Hausman. Those are two of the founders of NORDEF who recently won the Ag Innovation Challenge at American Farm Bureau Convention. If you would like to read more on their company, you can do so by going to www.kansaslivingmagazine.com slash NORDEF or look at their website, NORDEF.com. I'm Shelby Varner, and this has been Inside Ag from Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. Thank you.